Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to E3 Day 3. Tyler Briggs is dropping his phone. I am the hashtag Travis told you. Travis Snail, we are here for the E3. Welcome to my podcast and with my team. And I'm very happy to be joined by... Uh, I am the... Uh, I'll just go with the original, the mentor, Taylor Field. I'm the Magi, Tyler Briggs. I uh, am the Adam Hartcaster, Dylan Les. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 194 of the Geek First Podcast. We are here to be talking about Ubisoft's press conference for 2018. We are going to do a quick little overall, our thoughts of uh, the start of the conference to the end, what we thought about pacing, games, etc. And then we'll break down the conference game by game. Game by game. Taylor Field, you're Mr. Ubisoft, so I'll throw it over to you. I love um, what you're say. I, I quite enjoyed the podcast. The or podcast. The podcast. I enjoyed the, our uh, podcast quite a bit the, too. Uh, Almost in three years. The, uh, great fans, good logos, good music. And boom! Um, good music. Good looking hosts. Um, no, hosts. I, I enjoyed the conference. It's definitely not, you know, it's definitely not going to be the same kind of rating when we get to the end. You know, I've given a few of the other ones so far. But that being said, I still really enjoyed what they brought to the table. I had a lot of things that I'm excited for. And for me as a Ubisoft fan, I think there's lots of stuff that's coming my way that uh, I can be really pumped for. Um, obviously ending on Assassin's Creed, just it totally pulled me in and uh, sucked my attention completely up into just what was going on and what they were showcasing and everything. And I'm really excited to get to talk about that. Um, other than that, there's there's just, uh, I don't know, there's just, I, I, uh, I enjoyed it, but uh, presentation wise, you know, there is a lot of things that could have been better things that do drag along a little bit, you know, as much as, like, I personally don't mind the whole start with a trailer, they're gonna come on stage, talk about it, then end with a trailer, you know, um, there's a few things that hopefully they will change in the long run, but, uh, as of right now, 30, 30 years we've been doing this and they haven't changed it, I think this is their fucking format, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm okay with it, but I guess sitting here with you guys, I, it pulls me out of it to the point like, well, oh, uh, like the the general kind of people who you know like the Bethesda and all the and the, you know your Sony and all that stuff. You know, this is what we want of a conference. It pulls me out and think, well, you know, maybe they should change these things up and do that. But uh, so yeah, I thought it was a decent enough conference. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of them like splitting up all of their segments into like two. Uh, I think you can do that for some games and if you really like have a plan for it, but it kind of seems like that's just their default and they start with that and then for other games they switch it up. So not the best, but overall I think the pacing was actually quite quite good this year. Is And the show, like the presentation was pretty solid. They had a couple of celebrity guests up there. Uh, there was some all right stuff announcements in games. Like I, I like a couple of the Nintendo crossover things. Cool to see that. Um, but honestly, like other than a couple of these games, like none of the gameplay really spoke to me nothing really got me excited and i i feel like the only game out of this that i would buy is is the new trials game um i'm excited to talk about the assassin's creed reveal because that's you know obviously their big thing but yeah other than that nothing really got me uh all that excited but the conference itself was was pretty decent i, I think you know the gameplay trailers weren't uh uh, they didn't really speak to me in terms of the gameplay, but I think uh, a lot of the theatrical trailers, cinematic trailers they did were really, really interesting, yeah. really fun to watch. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. Yeah, no, I'll pick back on that. I think they have a lot of good cinematics. Gameplay, when it comes to it, lots of it feels a little basic for me or just stuff that I'm not really into. Um, the conference, I think this was actually their best one they've done since we've been doing it. Mm -hmm. This clocked about an hour and a half, so I think the past ones have been almost hour 45, two hours, so it was a bit shorter. Um, I feel it was a bit more compact as far as sometimes they didn't like the past few years they'd get like you know the classic four chairs and talk to a bunch of developers but yeah. they, you can do that for a few games but after all they were doing that for almost every game the past two years so I thought it was a bit tighter and I liked it um yeah I think it's the same thing as Dylan there's just not many games that speak to me um there wasn't any big surprise obviously Splinter Cell's yeah. 
what everyone's been wanting, and that didn't happen. So, and I won't like blame them for Assassin's Creed because that leaked and that came out, and I think it was still we didn't know enough of the game for it to end on. So I mm-hmm. think that was good. It's just not surprised it's gonna be like, man, like that's our, that's actually a really good point because I there wasn't anything else here that you're saying that was like shocking. No, and Assassin's Creed really could have had that. Like it, Beyond it Good and spoiled. Evil, Rainbow Six Trials, Rabbit, Skull Bones, Transference. Uh, yeah, a lot of kind, DLC and stuff. As it's well. kind of stuff we already knew, right? So it's stuff that either we knew and there's a sequel or it was more honestly just a lot of add-ons a lot of dlc and for that i think they could for a lot of the stuff crack down to not not crack down but crack down the amount of trailers they show and i think this could have been an hour 15 it would have been much better i was bored a lot of the times a lot of times during this conference just because it is the trailer talk trailer and lots of times and then it's the gameplay, and then they always... Well, no, no, no trailer, talk, and then yeah. it's gameplay. And then, like, it's coming out whenever, and then it's, like, another quick little teaser. It's, like, enough. Like, it's At least they only had, like, I guess one or two, like, skits this year, so yeah. that's fine. Yeah, and there wasn't, like, one concurrent host. Just people were coming out talking. So, yeah, I thought it was the best show I've been a part of as far as Ubisoft, but still, they're just kind of... They're always kind of middle of the pack, and they're just kind of bored, unfortunately. You know, I, I think they... I still think they need the team whoever does Sony and whoever does the second half of Bethesda last night. They just I need I think Ubisoft could always have like these really good solid conferences, but they just kind of bungle it all the time. And I don't know how they haven't learned to pace their conferences that well. And this was a bit better, but still it could be much better. So that's, mm-hmm. that's my thoughts. Yeah, I thought it was it wasn't necessarily anything that was glaringly bad. Um, as far as the developers talking and whatnot, everything kind of went smoothly. They had decent enough transitions between games. Um, it was good that they kind of between games they so they do the trailer talk trailer and then they just go straight to the trailer. Didn't feel rushed or anything. Mm-hmm. It went pretty smoothly, I guess. Um, but overall, I think for me at least, the whole conference was kind of just lackluster and there's no a little bit boring. Yeah, there wasn't anything yeah. that um, got me like out of my seat, leaning forward and whatnot. Um, there's definitely like a lack of soundtrack and sort of music for most things I felt like. I didn't really Except notice anything. Dance, yeah, yeah, and the actual yeah. musical performance. Yeah, so aside from that, and there was never, never anything that really got me super invested in it. So, mm-hmm. for me, this was the only conference so far where I actually looked, looked at my phone and was like, me too, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, it, they show some cool stuff and cool gameplay, but... It, um, I don't know, there just wasn't very much excitement surrounding everything, so, mm-hmm. it was, there was stuff and everything went smoothly, but as far as actually selling me on games and getting me excited for what they're revealing, mm-hmm. didn't really do its job. Nothing punched you in the gut. Mm-hmm. No. Well, I'm alive enough, I want to switch things up. I want to start with Assassin's Creed, because also we have the guy who runs the Assassin's Creed page. I'm going to give you the floor, and also, oh, as well, this comes back to a, kind of a bet we had about three weeks ago. Can I give it to you? Okay, thank you, and that's what we'll talk about that, but <laughs> thank you. what do you think about, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey, officially Odyssey, and officially coming out, like I'm not even going to joke with me right now, it's officially coming out October of this year, which is very surprising, because all very the reports surprising. and rumors were still early 2019. I'm, yeah, you go first, you go first. Um, there, there's, there's a few points I gotta remember to talk about on, on that, especially with, like, how soon it's releasing, um, but starting off, like, just when they unveiled it, 110%, it's a day one purchase. I oh. loved what I saw. <laughs> what, 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 what world would Assassin's Creed game not be a day one purchase? Much, I don't know. It's that like that. a 3DS version or something like okay, that. Okay, fair enough. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. If there's a Batman game, it's like That's only like a 20% chance. <laughs> yeah, you still get the 3DS. Yeah. Get the... But, uh, no, the game, absolutely, it looked beautiful. I am so very excited to play in ancient Greece. I love seeing these characters and these different elements and atmosphere. I love, love, love seeing so much of Origins that really made Origins a much more fluid and brighter experience than predecessors were being brought over into Odyssey. Uh, the fighting style, the skill trees, you know, bringing back you know your Eagle Vision, all these uh, new features that were implemented in Origins making a comeback. I think that uh, the naval combat making a huge return on a larger scale is huge. I think. Uh, just applying so many things, including the ability to choose what you say into Assassin's Creed game is absolutely massive. I mean, with all the games that we've had in this franchise and now, just to change things on that scale, is it makes all the difference for the game and, you know, your story progression. Um, 
the customizing, the customizing options, you know, adding on the Spartan helmet, mm -hmm. all those different things, you know, they were explored a little bit with Origins, you know, keeping your hood off and on, you know, changing facial hair, oh, that whoa. kind of stuff, like, very basic stuff that they've been slowly progressing to, but this just takes it to a whole new level. Um, I, I can't stress my excitement enough for this. Enough. Um, I have a few more points I want to talk about with it, but I'll let you guys give your impressions well, first. What I want to point out is I think all that stuff is good for the franchise, for people like you that are always going to follow these games, follow the franchise, buy them day one. But all this stuff is for, as a new person or someone that would jump on, it doesn't get me to want to do that because it's all very minimal stuff. When you look at the dialogue trees, even when you look at the skill tree, there's a pretty small skill tree and it looks like, I would imagine, pretty basic stuff and even the customization. like. I, it's, it's similar in the vein of Ubisoft always is where it's, you know, they'll have those open worlds, but it's, there's always like a roof or a level to it that they'll never get past. And I think this is great for the franchise and it's something that's really new and I don't want to get in this debate, but for me, it's always like Breath of the Wild where it's like, oh, they do all this great stuff, but it's like, this is stuff other games are doing already and they're doing it a bit better. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think it's great for your fan base. I just think someone as the outsider, that doesn't make me want to jump on just because I got that in The Witcher. I got that somewhere else, right? But it, mm -hmm. it's great for them. It's great to be changing things up, so that's what I thought as far as all those features and everything. So, yeah, yeah for me, the, the most intriguing thing is the same thing as Origin, which is the setting, mm -hmm. right? You know, picking a, a place and going full into, you know, the culture and the landscapes and the historical monuments and all this stuff. And obviously, Greece is a great place to go to. There's a lot to dive into there, so that's interesting to me. It's not as interesting as uh, the reveal of Egypt. I thought, I don't know, that's just like for my tastes at least more interesting. Um, and you're right, like, those are some good additions. The dialogue, <laughs> I, I thought the dialogue was really bad in the trailer, yeah. honestly. Like, the way the characters were talking to each other felt really weird. Socrates had, like, some dialogue, and it was like, ay, 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 this is really not getting me into it uh, at all. So that's kind of unfortunate. I think the, you know, bringing back the boats, and I don't know, I don't know what exactly they're going to, like, how in-depth they'll go with that, but obviously that was something that a lot of people liked in Black Flag. I mean, I still have never really played an Assassin's Creed game, so I don't have a whole lot of the deep insight. But, you know, also, game was beautiful, looked great. Uh, visually, combat, not really for me. Yeah, I mean, So, I don't know, there's... I, I think, you know, the, the Egypt thing really, like last year, really got me excited for it. I still haven't purchased it, but I still want to get that game. Um, this one, I don't know, I, I just didn't I just didn't like the gameplay segment of it, unfortunately. That's the thing for me. Like there's yeah. too many things that just took me out of it and like at the end of the day the most important thing for me is, is gameplay. That's always gonna be king over story, over this, that and the other thing. And especially for you know, an action adventure title, gameplay should be, you know, up there on the list and didn't really sell it for me in that regard. Because mm -hmm. you said the combat was kind of Dark Souls-ish, but I imagine that's still I was, different, right? I was here. mostly memeing. Okay, but thank you. No, I just want to clarify, because in Origins, you said that's similar, right? It's they, very similar. For me, it looks really slow-paced, and it looks really basic. Like, we saw her do that same kick, like, five different times. And for me, and, like, I'm a big fan. I know Dylan's off. I'm a big fan of, like, the mm -hmm. Arkham games and the Shav more like, that type of style. I don't even need it to be that, but... It, it, looked, just, it looked to me like they were trying to make it look... But more Dark Souls in, oh, in yeah. the sense that you're, uh, you know, you have to really dodge the enemy's attacks and plan out when you're gonna go for strikes. But mm. I don't know. It didn't. It, it kind of looked like you could just avoid that and just like easily dodge the guy. I mean, I don't know. I haven't played the game. And right. maybe there's more because at one point she pulls out a fire sword. Maybe there's more weapons and everything like that. But that's my worry of this game coming out in October. If this is the first reveal of it and it's October, that's a very small window. And I feel that, and we'll get talk about that after, but I feel like we're getting back into that Assassin's Creed where mm -hmm. they start to release it every year, and like this game seems a lower quality, in my opinion, than Origins. Like Just in looking at Origins, I didn't get around to because there's other games I want, but there's things about it I liked. But this feels like, it, I don't know if it's rushed because they've been working for a while, but it feels like that, where it's just like, again, where it's like, well, this feels a little lesser quality than what Origins would be, where they were pitching the idea of, hey, we want to really build up Assassin's Creed again and get it back to being a prime franchise and not annualized. But all like they took two years off and it's already annualized again. You know, like that's that's for me. It's it's very surprising that this is coming out in October. Well, that's the thing too. Like they said three years, so they started doing this during that break. That's when they started mm -hmm. on this mm -hmm. game. Um, so they said we're not gonna do it, but then already they knew they're all so, already. <laughs> but as for the combat system, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I don't fully remember exactly my experience with Dark Souls what the combat system is, so I can't relate the two very well, but. 
with Origins, it it very much is, uh, you know, you have a combo system, you do have, you know, heavy, uh, heavy light attacks, you know, blocking, and mm -hmm. you have de many different ways of incorporating your attack and timing and dodging and all that sort of stuff. So it definitely varies from slow to fast paced combat. Um, and I think, you know, it is something that head in the right direction because before with other games, it was as simple as holding down the trigger to keep your block and hitting a button just to do a counter attack or running and hitting a button to just do one simple attack. Mm -hmm. So I think that in the for combat system progression, it definitely is something that they're slowly progressing towards being better. Um, it being very, very similar to Origins in this sense, and I would have hoped for maybe a little bit more of a... Um, a little bit more of a change leading towards something a bit better. That being said, the um, I'm not sure what to really call it yet, but it looked like I'm just gonna call it an equipment wheel, holding left bumper and left trigger to cycle through uh, more weapons and equipment. Right. That is, I think that's great because that's something that was in previous Assassin's Creed games that was taken out. Yeah. Allows for easier customization well, selection. I, I'm sure there is some great moments in the combat, and like I don't know, there was that they showed that quick scene of like a full out battle happening. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they only took the time to fight one guy, so I, I don't know, maybe those moments get really intense. And I'm sure there is more combat to it, but it just makes me a bit worried that that is the, the, what they showed at E3 on the big stage. That's like their... That two segments of yeah. combat, which were not good from I don't know, my perspective. Mm -hmm. Briggs, what did you think of this? Very lackluster. Um, I'll start with the, as you mentioned, like the dialogue options and stuff seems very bare bones and basic. Um, the character models don't look that great yeah. for an October game. It's for a 2018 game. game. Um, and I, I, it looks like there's just so much improvement that they could do there. Mm -hmm. As far as gameplay and uh, combat and whatnot goes, I mean, it, for me, I was a huge fan of the first, I think, four Assassin's Creed games. Um, and I absolutely love those ones. And it always feels like it's just strained further and further away from that. So for me, nothing impressed me. A lot of the combat looked like it wasn't very satisfying. Yeah. When you, it, it looked like... That's the thing. It right? looks... You guys were comparing Dark Souls. It looks... on. It feels nothing like Dark Souls. It seemed like you have to hit an enemy so many times just to, like defeat them and yeah. it seems more it looked like it was more focused on your fighting stronger enemies rather than numerous weaker enemies and having those when you're fighting when the uh, fights on smaller scales you need to have those hits and those mechanics work really nicely and feel rewarding when you do mm -hmm. uh, participate in that and it just didn't look like it looked like it was a grind just button mash yeah. to it. it looked like there's a whole bunch of flashy movements and hits but they didn't really have much of an effect, and it's really just about repeating those those movements and repeating and repeating, and then eventually their health bar goes to zero. So, I go well, that's the Smash thing with the, the combat system, though, when you're fighting. It is based on levels, so you, in the Assassin's Creed, you can go to any area of the game you want, but you may not want to because if a guy is you know, a higher level than you, you're yeah. going to be dishing mm -hmm. on multiple hits. But when you go back and you've reached the high enough level, it's a one hit or two hit. It changes it up completely in that right. sense. So so I have a question. So obviously this is a different team that made Origins uh, completely. Or, uh, uh, they have two different studios, back, right? So, yeah, um, so I'm just, because my biggest intrigue in, in this installment and the last one is like, I don't know, just going around, like, the environment, you know, and, like, the setting and the, the culture aspect of it. Like, how much is there to do in Origins in just, like, walking around in the streets? Like, can you go talk to a bunch of people? Is there a lot of, like, little side things you can do? Or is it mostly revolved around, like, combat and you getting side quests that all involve combat? Like, is there ever quests in Assassin's Creed that don't involve combat? Or at least, like, the most uh, recent uh, ones? A lot, of, a lot of stuff with Origins, I find, like... There is like a large, I will actually no, because if you want to do combat, they do have quests, you know, for focusing on like killing bandits or going into the arena kind yeah. of thing like that, being a gladiator. But then there's a large portion that is exploring tombs and just trying to find access in pyramids or just going out through different cities or going out exploring underwater parts and that sort of stuff. So okay. they do have a large thing with uh, uh, executing different exploration uh, experiences and that sort of stuff, which is great. And I am wondering what they're going to do if they're going to change that up with this game or what exactly they're going to do. Because yeah. you don't you don't want something heavily focused on combat then? Well, I just didn't really like the look of the combat, mm. so I'm wondering how much else there is like to do, like how much other content there is because if if it's all based around like each quest ultimately ends with like some battle sequence, then I don't know if I'd be so interested, you know. 
Morrowind, one of my favorite games, because a lot of the missions are just, there's no combat whatsoever. You're just going around doing things in the world, you know. A lot of stuff. a lot of quests, like, if you're doing the main, main story, it won't always end with a battle, but it ends with you having to usually kill a target. But, you know, there's lots of side quests, too, where, you know, you have to sneak into an area, unlock the, like, jail cells, liberate people, or carry out people out of there, put mm -hmm. them on your horse, get them out, or different stuff like that. Well, and this so. is the thing I want to bring up as a point of contention as far as the game, guys making the game. So, uh, Assassin's Creed 1 was a big hit, and then 2 was loved by everybody. When 3 came out, that was kind of a lull of the series, right? People were not fond of 3, mm -hmm. and then they also made Unity as well. So they have a few kind of black marks on their record, and I don't say this is going to be that, that level, but I feel like I'm getting those kind of signs this is going to be a lesser one, you know, and that's that's kind of what everything from whether it's visuals to gameplay and just even the release date, so mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to look up and see what they made. And they've made other ones, they made Syndicate, which you liked and other people did, but it's not uh, the team, obviously, that did last year, but they also have made Unity and 3, which are two memes, so. Mm -hmm. Two memes. Yeah. Two memes. Meme, two memes. Um, one of my other points I want to bring up was... Uh, it coming out in October 5th, yeah. so now I'm wondering then, and this is kind of just my own kind of curiosity, now do you guys think this is the last Assassin's Creed we get on this console? Uh, well, that's all, well, that's strange for you to ask, because you don't believe we're getting new consoles next year. I know, but it, it's become a very large kind of is the conspiracy. Other, is, do you know if the other team's working on uh, DLC? additional content for Origins right now? As far as I know, I think Origins content has finished it and so it's wrapped they're, up. They're gotta be making another game by now, right? Yeah. I guess that depends. Next year, I could see an Assassin's Creed... Assassin's Creed, that's what's next. Um, awesome. I could see it still being on both consoles, though. So yeah. I'll still say no for now, because I could see next year being, oh, you got PS4 and PS5, because Black Flag yeah. did that, right? I think that's, yeah, so. that's probably what the more... Uh, I don't want to say generic option, but the safer option, I guess. Mm -hmm. Cause, so your battle release date, I want to ask you because when we got into it a couple weeks ago, you said your big thing why you didn't think we were getting another game was because you saw, said, hey, we're doing this as our vision, we're going to be supporting Origins for a while, we're not doing the analyze thing. You're Mr. Ubisoft, what do you think about this? Because this is coming out, let, it's literally yet less than a year than Origins. And now Origins they, came out, uh, when did it? End of October. I'll find out, so. Was it? Oh, okay. I think it was. For some like, reason no, I thought it was a spring release, but that's not true. October. So what do you think? Of, what do you think about that, Ted? Because you were big into that, and I just said, hey, don't, don't trust Ubisoft as far as you can throw. Um, I am a little let down in that sense. I think that that was definitely a big mistake. The game October twenty seventh, by the way, was ordered. Twenty seventh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think that the uh, the game, from what we saw, definitely needs a little bit more polishing off. And uh, though the whole time I was watching, I thought, okay, well, it's probably just something that you know. It's something they're going to keep working on. Obviously, we got a bit of time. They just wanted to throw something out there. But then that October 5th day completely just yeah. was a, a slap to the face, thinking, like, this game really is still lacking a lot of work, it looks like, mm -hmm. visually. So I I am very shocked. and I'm shocked about October. I thought early 2019, which is still, like, breaking what they said, but 2019 is like, okay, but... Maybe it's October 5th, 2019, because they never put a year under it. And for me, the the other thing that's strange is like I'm just trying to look at the games here. So like as far as your bigger ones, you got Spider Man and Tomb Raider in September, and then October you got Red Dead. That's right in the middle, and you got Battlefield. I feel like this is a game a lot of people that's will skip. It. Like I feel like it's a lot of people like they will put Assassin's, especially if I I'm, we haven't looked at one, so I don't know the reaction. You got the, your pulse and fingers for your page, but yeah. in between Red Dead and Spider Man is that's a tricky and, thing. And just because it's so soon, like obviously we talked about this a lot. Origins is a chance for a lot of people to jump back into the series. I mm -hmm. still am gonna play that game at some point, and I know some of my friends who haven't played Assassin's Creed forever, you know, got that game. I think they're like, oh, you know, probably not gonna play this. New one coming out. Just too soon. Yeah. Other games. Mm -hmm. Not a good time. Because uh, even then, I forgot Fallout 76 early November as well. So there's a lot of heavy hitters. And I don't you're know. You're talking about, to this the uh, Ubisoft division that's making this mm -hmm. uh, Assassin's Creed. So the one that made Origins. What was their game before that? I will go find out. Play it, yeah. <laughs> Let's try <laughs> to see. Syndicate? Yeah. Is that what? No, Syndicate no, was the, the one, that, was did the one that did this, this one. one. Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah. I will try to. I'm just wondering if they have like generally a better track record than so this Ubisoft other Montreal. I'm very very close. That it That's how the internet works, ladies and gentlemen. I'm surprised you don't know this off the top of your head. Make sure you subscribe. There's a lot. I don't Ubisoft think I've ever branches. seen you not wearing Assassin's Creed merch. So I just, the Ubisoft the branch. So they they've done two. They've done some. In Toronto, Toronto Montreal, world. Quebec, Singapore, uh, <laughs> like every <laughs> major city and every major. Wow. <laughs> Nice. They did two. They also did some work on three. Far Cry, a lot of Splinter Cell games. Okay, Black so they Watch yeah. Dogs, Far Cry. So they are the they are the bigger uh, template ones. Yeah. So, yeah, they're working on Transference. So I'm I'm just because uh, just kind of going back to what you guys. If there's anything else on this generation, like maybe, I hope at least that team takes some time if they decide to make another Assassin's Creed game next to take some time with it. Wait for the new. Uh, new generation to roll out and roll like a really nice big Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. nice and meaty mm-hmm. game you know like Far Cry 5's more... out right? Mm-hmm. yep okay yeah. so as of right now the only games they have listed for 2018 and beyond is Far Cry 5 and Transference so it could easily be secretly for working on Assassin's Creed right yeah. so probably uh, anything else you want to add on Assassin's Creed there Taylor obviously you you probably had a few tidbits yeah. little details Cheap plug, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Hey, you and Ruben are gonna also talk about some geeks creed. We're, we're gonna, gonna we're we're very in depth. Mm-hmm. I think the ancient Greece aspect is super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like the one thing that I thought was really cool about that. And yeah. It made me. I almost thought like, man, this could be really cool, and I like I could be interested in it. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, it's this Assassin's Creed. And I think the, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Last thing before you go into your notes, I'm very much like done breaks in the watch line where it is called Assassin's Creed, but this just feels like a completely different yeah. franchise with Origins. Mm-hmm. And I get what you're saying and everything, but I feel like they just wanted to, they tried to revive it. I don't know, man. I think the gameplay is so similar that like why. I feel like I'm really story fits. aspect too. Yeah, but story so you, gotta you have to play. All, right? yeah, when you play Origins, the there are so many aspects, subtle and larger scale, as you progress, that indicate Assassin's Creed, and that makes like Origins 100. percent I could say this is an Assassin's Creed game from mm-hmm. start to finish. There is nothing that takes away from you feeling like it's anything less than that. And seeing what but we you saw could there, say when you're we we're talking about origin, like you don't really feel like an assassin at all. So I don't understand that then. If it feels like it's an assassin's creed game, but you don't feel like an assassin. Like, it's the it's it's the events strange. that unfold around you in the story, but the character himself feeling like an assassin. At times, you really don't feel like this is an assassin, but it doesn't take away from the fact that the atmosphere and the element of this game is Assassin's Creed. And that's where I'm just on the, just maybe make a new IP. Make, like, I don't know. If you don't, if the game's called Assassin's Creed and you're playing, like, Assassin, for me, it's it's a little strange. Like, I, it's, it, there, to me, Origins will, will, was a little less than that, but when I watch this and I see this Assassin's Creed game, for me, it's a big disconnect, and I don't, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's A and C, and somewhere B is gone, so, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's... That's how I feel. Um, so some stuff I jotted down. I think it's great that you're playing as the grandkid of Leonidas. I think that's fantastic. I won't specify <laughs> boy or girl because Cassandra and Alexo. Mm-hmm. Alexis or Alexis. 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 That was rumored about the choosing between the male and the female. Yeah. So mm-hmm. leaks were pretty good. Uh, and then we got it's 431 before Christ, which is cool. Uh, we have fans starting to get in if anyone yeah, has that. Big yeah. hammer story. We told them we'd get do signings after this podcast, so yeah. We want them to. The uh, mentor at the end there, I think that's great. Origins, the god battles are fantastic. I love those I aspects. Know. The mythological placement in these games is incredible. A lot of roots so, in Greece. Greece, Greece, you know, Rome, there's so much crazy stuff you can do with that. Culture. So I'm very, very excited for that. Mm-hmm. Anything else, or we want to jump back to the very beginning of the mm-hmm. shit show? Oh, Just Dance came also, out. Also, once again, really good logo. Yeah, they're great mm-hmm. on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did this like five minute thing of bears and people dance to the halls and they got to the the, the stage. They announced it's coming October. Great. I hate that they start this all the time. It's just, it, for me, this is... I'm fine ex- with it because get it out of the way. I, but I don't think they need a dance. It's the same way as Xbox doesn't need a car and they got rid of the cars this year. Every year they'd be like, look at this nice car. And we made it every detail and you can see the little glass and like... Just say Just Dance is coming. I don't need the bears dancing. I don't think it's too bad because I know there's obviously going to be an audience for Just Dance, and I think, um, sure, it might seem a little cheesy to have any of those live action performances, but. Ubisoft embraces cheese. I think, um, I think, I think it was fine. It was much better from what I remember two years ago. It was short, concise, they did a little bit on stage, and then they just kind of pieced out. They didn't really need anyone to come up and talk about it. They really just needed to showcase that it was there, and it, I, I mean, 
maybe the it could have been done better, but I thought it was fine for what it was. I didn't have any issues with it, and it didn't really take away from the rest of the show. So, yeah, that, that's my opinion on Just Dance 2019. Um, I love the Just Dance games. I think it's a great one. You don't have to get one every year, but... Um, I think it's it's, it's still a, releasing for the Wii. I, that's why I want to. Is it really it's still going out for the Wii? Good for them. That's awesome. Wow. Um, <laughs> no, I think I think you know what Just Dance games have kind of uh, worked out <laughs> too. They must get sales on there. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that's why they're making it. Some mom in some of Alaska's buying it. You know, Alaska. And they make it just for her. She sends a letter every year. Please. Yeah, yeah that's what that's. Please release it. Elder Scrolls Six on the Wii. Okay. okay. <laughs> Ubisoft really. Uh, one of I think we can let those go now that the Wii is here. Beyond Good and Evil 2 had another showcase that devs come out to talk about. They had a cinematic trailer and they also had just Warren Love's company and himself come out with hit record. They're going to yep. be supplying some art and songs to the, the uh, game. If you know what he does, he's very much an interactive cool fan. Yeah, yeah, he's he's making a lot of big moves these past few years. Hit record keeps growing and growing. I never played this game. Uh, the first one, uh, I'll see Who did? One. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed the cinematic trailer. I think this game is still quite a ways away because it's another yeah. year where it's just a cinematic and they're just like, oh, there's some gameplay in there. What was there? A little bit. After the, because they had the cinematic and they had the people talk and then they okay. had a little game. Yeah, it wasn't trailer. much. And then I can't remember they're doing like a... I don't think it was full gameplay because I don't think there was like a HUD or anything. I no, think no, it was just, it was like, just like showcasing that you there's like vehicles, like hovercrafts that you can fly around in cities okay. and then you can fly around in your spaceships and stuff. And Vaguely remember that. There's yeah. a little bit of combat showcased, but very, yeah. very minimal. And then they're doing this like Beyond Good and Evil Fest, so obviously they're going to talk about more there, but I think this game, you won't see it on this generation. And uh, I'm not playing the first one, so it doesn't matter to me, but uh, fuck prequels. Yeah. Eh. I mean, I think it's at least two or three years out, probably. Yeah. It's quite a ways, especially since they're just talking about incorporating the hit record collaboration oh, soundtracks. Yeah. Right. And if they if they're still bringing those sorts of assets into the game, mm -hmm. it's like very early on in production. And last year they hadn't even started working on it. Last year it was just the announcement mm -hmm. we're working on it in space. So it's so. still fairly early on. Um, I I did enjoy the cinematic trailer. Uh, it looked really cool, but. Again, it wasn't anything that would, would sell me on the game. Mm -hmm. uh, it was more of just kind of like an intro to the characters and the kind of vibe that the game's going to be giving. The gameplay trailer itself was, I mean, it just showed a little bit of the what the game's going to offer. Yeah. Again, yeah. Very right. limited right now. It's, um, you know. I, I really like the idea of what they're doing with the record, though, the collaboration aspects. I think... Um, It'll be interesting to see how it works out, for sure. Yeah. But I think it's a really cool idea that going into the future, having this sort of thing in these very large sort of... It seems like it's going to be like a very expansive game with lots of environments and yeah. lots of places, uh, lots of things to be. And I think having that collaboration with fans, having uh, people be able to like have this one part of the game where you're showing and then like one of your friends goes through and is like, holy shit, that's, that's my art, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I think that's a really cool idea. It it definitely needs the proper execution. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just gonna either fall through and just you might as well just have the existing team make that art. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens and what it how it could influence the industry going forward. Mm -hmm. I don't know but if I would play this game, but I just really want to, to succeed. You know, I really mm -hmm. want to do well. I don't want to be one of those games that comes out as kind of like just a dud. You know, like yeah, I, I I'm pulling for them. This seems know? like a really like a. It could be a huge thing, yeah. especially since the game came out what seventeen years ago, something like two thousand three. Yeah, three. Yeah. So okay, fifteen years. years. Yeah. yeah. So if they're making this sequel to or prequel to it, I guess, um, it's obviously got to have a big following already. So yeah. like a big cult following or whatnot. So this could be Not necessarily, an absolutely huge thing. I don't. Know. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe not necessarily, <laughs> but I feel like there's there's quite a bit of a following to it if they're doing this 15 years later mm -hmm. so we'll see how it plays out I, I would like it to do well as well but I don't know if it's game all good mm -hmm. yeah I don't know I don't have much to say just with a it was a really nice cinematic trailer really cool uh, you know unique art style and, and characters and definitely like I'm really curious to see the world and yeah I don't know I'm mostly just curious like what really this game is fully and uh, action adventure yeah and I you know, like the collaboration as well so yeah. I don't know. Game to keep keep an eye on for sure. 
I hope next year there's like a maybe a bigger showcase with some some more content shown. Yeah. Perhaps that would be nice. Mm -hmm. But no complaints. Yeah. Um, it's a game that has a lot of passion behind it. I just I thought the cinematic was really really amazing. Uh, I thought the visuals of that and everything the story they were telling looked great and. Uh, it definitely had a hook for me. Um, depending on when it comes out, you know, there's a lot of games in the works right now for the next couple of years. So. I would, I'd say wait to make a decision if you're going to buy it. <laughs> well, I don't think it would be a day one, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, depending on my schedule with uh, life and all these games, it's definitely something I do want to get around to trying, you know. What it, you playing uh, in 2020? What's that? What you playing in 2020? My plan? Or plan? What are you playing? Well, like the next sixth Assassin's Creed game? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, after that was uh, Rainbow Six. They came out and did a showcase there. Talked about some DLC. Um, I got nothing to add. I'm happy for those people. And they're doing a bunch of stuff. They're doing like a six month uh, esports gaming thing. So yeah. good for those people. There's but some yeah, esports showcases there. Kind of just kind documentary. No of... yeah. oh, god. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. Cool. I don't know. If... Well, a lot of that stuff. I mean, it's cool to showcase it. Um, for, as far as E3 goes, I don't know if this is the best place to be showcasing it. Yeah. Um, I think it's just kind of acknowledging that Rainbow Six is a really big thing for them that they've got going on, and I think that's fine, but as far as it went, um, it was more for people who were already into the Rainbow Six Siege and esports scene, as far as people who were just watching E3 without knowing much about it, they didn't really give a lot. So it was just kind of there. It wasn't very. It didn't. It wasn't like a huge long thing, so it didn't really drag on. But it didn't really contribute a whole lot. I felt. I I like esports. Uh, I haven't really. I'm not all that interested in like the traditional sh uh, shooters like Call of Duty or um, Rainbow Six in terms of esports. I I like Counter Strike as a as a shooter more because of the strategy element, but not so much into these uh, these sorts of games. But I like that they uh, are promoting it, and I'm actually curious with this documentary. I'll probably I'll probably check it out. I like that they they're highlighting eight people, and I think a couple of them were players, but there was like one coach, one analyst, and a streamer. Yeah, so they I think that's a really cool way to um, tackle a documentary like this because for outsiders, people like me who have no idea anything about the competitive scene, it'll probably give you a good showcase from all the different perspectives. So. I'm really excited for that. Actually, I'll definitely definitely check that out. Unless I have to pay for it. If I don't have to, if I have to pay for it, you're not getting my money for that. But I think it's uh it's cool that they're rolling out all sorts of different stuff for for this game and trying to support it and push along instead of just making a new one every year. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I would put it in the same category as Call of Duty exactly. Like I I don't I don't I haven't played Counter Strike, so I don't know how tactical I can really get. Um. But I think, you know, for Rainbow Six Siege, it's, it's very good for the community in the sense that, you know, that it's getting a little bit more attention because of the whole thing strongly being based on strategy and jumping up, I think, what did they say, 12 million players? Well, 35, 35. Well, 35 million. I Discounting the big time. Jesus. Um, but it's definitely a game that had a completely rocky start, and it's totally on their fourth or fifth year of Content, I think. Really? I'm gonna say yeah, it just yeah, I think it just thought. picked up like in the last year or so. Yeah. But I know cool. I, I, I also I don't I haven't played it and I don't think I've really seen a whole lot of gameplay of it, so it's hard for me to say what I would classify it as, but I have heard that it's a lot more um, tactical kinda like Counter Strike, but there they it is like projectile weapons too, it's not just hit scan, right? Do you know how it works? Mechanically? No. I'm not sure what right. hits, hit scan. What is that term mean exactly? It means that when you shoot the bullet with the gun, there's no travel time. Oh, um... Like PUBG, for example, is projectile. Call of Duty's hit scan. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's more projectile. I mean, I... When I... I bought it a long time ago, and I played it, I enjoyed it, but I didn't have anyone to play it with, so I got rid of it. Um, so... I, I definitely... I'm not in the right position to answer that question. Yeah. Um... But, uh, no, I'm very happy for the community getting its recognition for the game now, so. Did you have anything from me there? Oh, thank you. Uh, no, I got nothing else to add. Uh, Trials was next. Trials. Well, Trials, for me, was one of the most exciting things, actually. 
Um, I remember playing these games on those free Flash game websites back when it was like the most basic 2D sort of thing. Oh yeah, mini clip all and the way, dude. It was like it was a lot of fun. I remember we'd just be in class, just like on our laptops and just like playing it, it like in a little minimized screen while yeah, the teacher yeah. was talking. So I put so many hours into that game uh, back as a kid, and it, it's one of those ones that like you can still play it like now and it's great and I it, this actually got me really excited about um, like it looks absolutely great it looks like there's co-op so you can get like four of your friends and just like do the same lines together yeah that'd be really fun um, and it just like all the different environments that they have the scenery everything it looks like it could just all come together to be like a really fun and simple game mm -hmm. that if it's like I don't know how they're uh, they're on Steam, right? I they're on Steam. Uh, I think they're usually around twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Okay, that's not too bad. I probably wouldn't pay twenty dollars for the full game, but I if it was on sale at some point, I could definitely see myself picking it up. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they, I I think this one actually got me kind of excited for a game, um, compared to the rest of everything else in this conference, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, yeah, it was a kind of a, a cheesy little skit they had at first, but overall I thought it was a good presentation. Like that second mm -hmm. trailer, you know, I didn't think it was necessary, but then it was actually just like more comedic, and I, I thought yeah. it was a good showcase. But yeah, I think they've done, they're either on three, I think they're on, I think this will be their fourth uh, Trials game in terms of like the HD reboot for consoles that they've been working on. Um, Trials HD was the first one, and I played the shit out of that. I love that game so much, and then. I can't remember, I think it's Trials Evolution is the next one, play that one as well, it's a lot of fun. Uh, whatever Trials they're pimping out is on uh, PSN right now, uh, if you have PS Plus you can get it for free this month. So I'm going to download that and play that one some more. But yeah, the Trials games, they always uh, seem to be getting bigger and better in terms of graphical fidelity and like the types of obstacles uh, and objects that they have. Uh, it's cool that they have the map editor so you can make all these things if you want. Like it takes a lot of work if you want to make like a really fully theatrical map but you can do it and they let you you know change the background so you can dress it up however you want as well so i, I love them they're really like they're quite difficult games as well uh but you know I, i'm always down for a nice physics based game and trials i think is the king of that right now so i'm glad that they're still kicking the new logo also is very sweet i like that so i trials never really a game that i'm getting day one necessarily but uh Definitely a game I'll play eventually. So yeah, Wait, have they on. always had multiplayer, or is it just is it that name? Uh, they've had multiplayer. Well, just like a leaderboard based multiplayer where you can yeah, see. Yeah, I, like I think you can. People on the same. I think round. you can possibly like load in uh, the ghosts so you can see like mm -hmm. the the thing. Come it's on, fans. people. <laughs> they, Come on. they need to get in, you know. Keep on. No, I got a roommate to deal with it. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, but no, I don't. I don't think they've ever had like multiplayer where you yeah. can ride at the exact same time on the same track. Uh, at least not in the two trials of things I played recently. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. for me at least that would be a big selling point because it it, it always seems like they're they're really fun games. I got lots of good memories for the older versions yeah, of that. Yeah. But I think something that would be like just vastly improved the enjoyability of it for me is to have like these friends and have like races on the same line at the same time. I'm sure you can do leaderboards, but having the two of you just like in like the same time frame pretty much, just going in, taking jumps, doing cool tricks together, just trying out these crazy lines would be so much fun. So I think that that, that can be a huge uh, selling point for them and I think that's almost revolutionary for that kind of game. Yeah. Makes it more competitive too. Like when you're doing the same run and you see your friend biff it hard, it just yeah. it puts more eyes on you. It just gets more like uh All eyes on me. More uh crazy kind of stuff happening. Exactly. A lot more replayability too. Yeah. That. Did you all worry on trials? Um I think it was definitely a, a good high point of the conference. I think it definitely looked exciting. Lots of times like I played it back in high school, absolutely. I think I I downloaded it for free with X Box Live. I haven't tried it yet. I'm not even sure which one I got for free, but uh, I definitely have it downloaded and might give it a try. So, uh, yeah, I liked the second trailer, the comedic trailer that was good. I didn't mind the showcase. I just for what the conference is, I like any three. I don't need the comedy sketches with the guy who comes out with the bike and everything. It was fine, but I I like the more direct stuff. So, kind of a low point for me. Uh, DK and Rabbids. Uh, good for them. You got a big expansion. Ubisoft continue that relationship. Obviously, we'll talk about that later as well. But uh, 
it looked good. Obviously, you say you liked the game for the thirty minutes you played it, so that's good. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I I'll never play this game, but I like seeing uh, companies work together like that, and it looks like a lot of fun. So mm-hmm. good, good for DK. Always good for DK. I like they they played. Always good for DK. They played the uh, one of the themes from DK sixty four, uh, which was a big nostalgia trip for me. I think it's just like the sound that the the soundtrack that plays when you're just walking around the island. So not in like any particular level. Could be wrong on that, but I don't know. I like that quick nostalgia hit. Mm-hmm. I really like the live music for that. Um, I think the presentation could be a little bit better. Because a lot of the time, cause the screen was like the bottom of the screen was at the same level as the stage, so the people doing the live music were kind of cutting off the screen a little bit, and mm-hmm. the majority for us viewers of the um, it was from it wasn't just like just a screen as it had done for most other gameplay moments on there. It was the uh, camera from the crowd pretty much mm-hmm. showing it. So there's a lot, it wasn't like a huge issue, but. For me, it, I feel like that could have been presented a little bit better. Um, as far as, I mean, it looks like if you enjoyed the Mario Rabbids game, then this is probably be a good game, great game for you. Mm-hmm. But for me, I mean, it's not going to sell me on anything new. I appreciate live music, as, but yeah. Well, you're not going to buy a Switch to play this game? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Um, I totally agree with you. The The musicians definitely cut out that part of the screen during the transitions. I feel like when the music playing, they should have just kept to the cinematic the whole time and not gone back and forth between the two. Yeah, maybe like you can showcase that it's live music like at the start and maybe like one or two shots of the whole thing playing. Yeah. Still, you should have the majority of it on the actual trailer. So I I think some stuff out when they have the musicians on a separate stage and then there's the video stage. Um, Who would have thunk? But yeah, as for the game itself, uh, honestly, I feel like this is one of the most visually beautiful Mario games I've ever seen. It, the transitions between the cinematics and the gameplay are almost seamless when you play it, and it is just beautiful. The turn-based strategy aspect to this is so much fun, and there's so much character and bright atmosphere in this game. I absolutely love it, and uh, it's definitely something that uh, I want to try out this Donkey Kong experience. Like, I want to... I have to buy this game. You gotta do that first. I gotta do that first. Well, this is just a DLC, too, right? It's a DLC, yeah. It is. I think they said it's free for the Seasons Pass holders. Um, yeah. So maybe you'll get your Waluigi expansion. I think it's expansion. only available for Waluigi Rabbids. Rabbids. Let's go. Really? Maybe. Only available for Seasons Pass holders. It said, because at one point it didn't say free for Seasons Pass holders, it said available for Seasons Pass holders. Available for Seasons Pass holders. So maybe it's only available for them for. A time. certain amount of time while while it's released. That'd be interesting if you're you know, if you're not a season's pass holder. Well, is there was there anything else for the season's pass? Um, cosmetics. I think there's just well, I don't I don't actually know. I'd have to look into it. Because if that's really the only thing, then buying the season's pass would be the same as buying the DLC. Exactly. So they, yeah. It doesn't really make a difference, but yeah. So I would assume they have more content on the way, or they already do have content out right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something to look into. That's for sure. Uh, after that was the great Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones. Skull this and bones. game. Can you I start? Go, uh, do you want to start positive or do you want to end on a positive? I'm going to say that this game looks incredibly lame. Yeah. And okay. I'm very disappointed. The water effects are good, but the gameplay looks yeah. incredibly boring. I could probably have fun with it for 15 minutes. The trailers were a completely different game. Like, their cinematic trailer. All the stuff they show is not this game. It's exactly what yeah. I worried about last year when they showed this boat. And like, oh, there could be more. And we talked about that. Like, there's not going to be more. It's going to be a fucking boat game. It's a fucking boat game. It looks so yeah. anticlimactic. When they got, when they took control of one boat, they're like, oh, there might be some gameplay. No, it just, like, cut away. And the guy was again like, oh, let's go to the seas. Like, er- it's like, like it's a big be- loot urn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Legendary like, chest. If this game is 30 to 40 bucks, I'll say, okay, fine, you do your fucking boat game. But it's not going to be. It's going to be a full $80 game. This just looks, uh, you couldn't pay me to play this game. Like, it's just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I mean, I really like the idea of it. Um, but the execution isn't great. I think later in coming years, there will be a much better execution for this idea. I'm a huge fan of that kind of naval ship-based combat where it's a lot of based on kind of movement around enemy ships and lining up your guns properly and that sort of stuff. Um, so that that's like a really big thing that I like a lot. Um, but this just this game looks like it's a lot of it's just very lackluster. There's not going to be a lot of impact. I don't like how 
the fact that you're shooting cannonballs at wooden ships, but it takes like 12 different volleys because the ships have health bars. Mm -hmm. You see all these explosions and they're still going. So as, the, as far as like a realism aspect goes, which I really enjoy in games for the most part, that sort of seems a bit uh, lackluster. The only single player kind of captain movement that you get outside of a ship seems in your own little private area yeah, that you don't base. interact with yeah. other players. All the online actual gameplay stuff is boat only, which boat also only. is a little bit... Um, I mean, it's not the worst ready. thing, but it looks like it's a very simple gameplay loop, Who's too. Whose boat was it? Oh, it's yeah. right. was it, Ubisoft? Are you going to attack this ship? Are you not going to attack this ship? If you attack this ship, other ships might attack you. It seems like a very simple gameplay loop. Yeah. Um, for me, I... Like, in naval combat-wise, I want to say, like, there's this one game called Fractured Space. It's pretty much just, like... It's similar to this, but it's on, like, the whole another scale because it's in space so you have the um up down axis too mm -hmm. y axis some would say some would say yeah, axis, x axis so Portrait it's um it, it, it that, that that that's like a it's not the greatest game but it it really has like really good like ship to ship kind of naval ship combat ship. and ship on ship action. if this if a game like this um does have like much more polished combat and seems a lot more fleshed out, This it's a kind of game that I'd be really interested in. Mm -hmm. But the fact that even when you go and board a ship, it literally goes up, it boards, and then it just like straight into a little cinematic of you taking over the ship. Yeah. Despite the fact that they have One single player gameplay. movement. Like they have you moving your captain, but they don't incorporate it into any other part of the gameplay other than in your little hideout. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, just shows how lazy they've been. Yeah. So. With uh, so I'm gonna look back to Black Flag here as an example. Now, uh, did any of you guys get to play it? No. Nope. No. Um, the naval combat in that is obviously very similar, and this is something that is like a spiritual successor of what Black Flag introduced with naval combat and piracy and all that sort of stuff. Um, a lot of similarities. The uh, one thing to note is with Black Flag, one of the most repetitive things was boarding ships. It was, I don't know how much they could really change or create and get, you know, creative with that, getting on killing, well, like, Well, Assassin's Creed, you probably were, like, running around, jumping from ship to ship and attacking people. When, when you board with Assassin's Creed, you know, you have to fight the ship to the point where your cannons have disarmed enough where it can't sail anymore, it floats there, you pull up next to it, and then you jump onto that ship and you kill, like, a few guys and the captain... And then that's it. Then it goes to a cutscene of you guys moving the loot off the ship, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And half the time it gets so repetitive that I end up not even boarding the ships anymore. I just blow it up because it's just it comes to a point where I don't need to keep doing this, and it gets to be unless they create an inventive, creative way of going about it. Which personally, it I seems don't know like exactly. this game didn't even try. Yeah, I think they. Should, I think as if the boarding is going to be such a big mechanic, I think it is important to at least try and incorporate something like that, especially if there's going to be playing against other, that's also going to be PvP too. So I think that could incorporate a really cool gameplay mechanic, whereas if, like the kind of high risk, high reward, so if you go up to another enemy player's ship, and you don't want to say, take a lot of, you know their cannons are going to match you, so you try and get up close and board them, and if you successfully board them and defeat the other player, then you basically take very little damage, but you kill the captain who's the mm -hmm. other player, and you get all the loot. So it kind of incorporates another way to interact with other players, and, or even other NPCs, but the fact that that's not even going to be, in, it's only because of how it works, it's, I imagine it's not going to be an option you can do yeah. against other players. Well, it so. seems like they traded that up for the ability to, you know, work with other players and their ships to create a fleet to take down a more powerful player mm -hmm. or NPC. And then, at those, as a result of that, afterwards, then see, you know, what happens. You know, are you going to stick with these players, or are you going to betray them? Like, see what kind of, uh, what kind of things happen yeah. from that. So it seems like that's kind of the route that they've, they've taken. Um, I really, I don't know if this will be a day one game for myself, because, I mean, I've had this experience with Black Flag, so I, it's very similar. But, uh, that being said, it's definitely a game I am going to get at some point. I... Definitely, I want to customize my ship. I want to sail around and, you know, form these strategies. I want to blow a couple hours just blasting other ships out of the water. That was, for Black Flag, that was fantastic. And this feels like 
everything that you enjoy about the naval combat in that sense just brought into an online perspective. So so that, that's enough for you for a full for full price game. Yeah, I don't day one full price. I really don't want to because. Well, then you don't have to. Yeah, 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 that's good enough for me. Cool, they're, Taylor. They're, they're, Where's they're my skull and bones, Taylor? They got a gun to my head. No. Um, I feel like uh, it's definitely going to be something I'll just I'll wait a little bit because, you know. It'll maybe, probably go uh, sell pretty quick when the Xbox games, games pass. Yeah. So yeah, Maybe. Possible. That's cool. Yeah, that's possible. For me, this seems like a $20, $30 game. But it's but not something. Me. Yeah, unless there's they end up putting a huge amount of post um, release support that adds new elements to the game and really improves it, I would just I'm just Trains. gonna wait till another studio or another team uh, picks up this same uh, same concept and really delivers a much more polished experience. Polished. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Crushed. Like I'd rather get Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey, you know, 100%. And just swim around and yeah. fly the boats in that game, and then also get to do a bunch of other things. Or just go buy a black flag. Yeah. Yeah, go play Sea of Thieves. Transference next. Elijah Wood came out. Mr. Frodo himself. Really cool trailer. Yeah, cool trailer. Um, I think it's gonna be a fun VR experience. I don't have VR, so I'll never experience yeah. it. But um, <laughs> it lo- it's nice and creepy. They and play the VR arcade. I'll play. Yeah, I like what Elijah Wood's comedy is doing. I said this last cool. year. Go check out their movies. He does some really experimental type movies. His most famous one, he does a movie completely from first point of view, and it's about serial killers. So he's a creative guy. So uh, yeah, I, I'd be excited to try this out if I had the opportunity. And it looked good. I do want to mention that I'm pretty sure he mentioned that it will be coming to um, classes like consoles too, just. Oh, okay. VR. Yeah. So there will be there will be the kind of full VR experience. Yeah. But you can play it without having what VR. What kind as of well. price point it would be? Non-VR? So, I feel like for me, I don't know if I would get it non VR just mm-hmm. because it seems like rather than being a game that's just made for a normal play and then it has a VR aspect to it, this one seems like it's made for VR. Yeah. So, I would prefer to wait to get VR, which I imagine I will eventually get. Uh, once everything like maybe prices come down or they get a bit more polished up, but polished out. It, it, it's cool to see in these games like for VR. This looks like a big, much more. Um, it, it seems like much bigger of a game for VR than what has been. Really, I didn't get that. I, I think it's or do think a pretty smaller small. game? Yeah, because okay. it seems like it just takes place in a house. It's my guess, but I think it's just gonna be like a smaller sort of experience, experience. or anything. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. I, I think it's a really cool idea, though. Mm-hmm. Looks like a cool concept. Yeah. And actually reminds me of that uh, Black Mirror uh, episode where the guy game. goes to Game yeah, Test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I talked about that last year, yeah. I, I think it seems really a uh, really cool idea. <laughs> oh, you're maybe. a whole year behind on Travis's thoughts. Yeah, well, I wasn't here last year, so... I'm just saying I agree with Tyler. There's I came into existence just... Travis was right! A mere day. <laughs> That's his <laughs> podcast! We're all his slaves! My team! <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with the game. Um, but for me, this would not. I could be easily a, see myself, you know, watching a playthrough for a long time. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I, I probably wouldn't watch a playthrough. I don't really like watching playthroughs. I'm with you. Oh, cool. Time so, Travis were right. So next game. <laughs> um, it looked very mysterious. Mysterious. Uh, I. Uh, it's not a Taylor game. It's definitely not something yeah. I would pick up day one. <laughs> uh, maybe one. if Elijah Wood was there with me, I would. But uh, hey, Taylor, <laughs> share nice ass, ass. <laughs> nice. Elijah. Whoa. Um, but you know, if if they well, have like a local uh, Arcadia or whatever, maybe I'll go. I'll pay a little fee and give it a test. Pay a little fee. I want the boy mash up the stew VR experience. Yeah, that's what I want. Me too. Mm. Full Lord of the Rings. Uh, here's a fucking low point. It was last year too. Starlink. You want to talk about games, this conference that seemed like it's dated, this is how data is against. It's invented dated. So there's just one line in this thing, I can't remember what exactly she said, but just like, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, to take over, and the guy was like, exactly, and then yeah. it's like, ugh, this game, and the whole Toys to Life thing, as someone that bought almost every Disney Infinity character, if Disney, Disney does not fail at much, they failed at two things, Toys to Life, and making a good Han Solo movie. So you know what, I think you should stop the Toys to Life. And this idea, having Star Fox in there is cool. Again, it's like DK, anytime yeah. there's crossovers, that's awesome, but that's not, they, that's not going to be enough yeah. to sell this they, game. They so. said, but didn't confirm, that they wanted the whole Star Fox crew, so maybe yeah. Falco, Slippy, and... Well, uh, they showed Slippy. Fall for ships Wait, flying they say the whole well, they, they they said, He said he, he said wanted crew. it. He said, he, I always want his crew. I but until I see ships. Falco, 
I don't believe it. Did you see the four ships behind? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. understand why they wouldn't show Falco and Peppy and Slippy. Why not show them, yeah. right? Star Fox is the most iconic. Why not show all of them? Right? Um, Why not? We did just have a conference have, where EA did. It's coming out in like October. Dylan, I don't have a good answer for you. Yeah. We did remember EA didn't show what we wanted or anything like that, so maybe they're just like lazy this year. Yeah, but this is Star. You like you don't get. You, this is their big chance. This is their two big chances. Like this year and last year at Ubisoft's yeah. conference. That's when people are gonna have their eyes on the game. Yeah. That's when you show the whole crew. There's right? nothing you do to yeah, sell no, this game. Right. Not mm -hmm. Like this game's dead in the water. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it comes out soon. It comes out this year, so I think exactly. you show the full crew and now. No Falco, no buy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not buying anyway, but... Uh, it was nice that they brought me a moto up, said, hey, what's up, my dude, and gave him a little uh, figure thing. He yeah. seemed pretty stoked. They even brought him backstage. Who knows? Maybe he's, they got strippers in there and have a full party. I'm not wow. sure. Wow. <laughs> Just going to hold them up. He gives the whole crew will release these pictures. Oh, yikes. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm, laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm a... I'm a... I definitely won't, you know, I'm very curious to see the price won't. points. I just won't. <laughs> I, won't. I, won't. I just, I want to see price points and stuff still, because it's a game that I wouldn't mind trying on the Switch. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if I get to have that experience where I'm playing as Falco and, and Co. flying through. Co. Uh, oh, Co. <laughs> Star Fox. Star Fox. Star Fox. <laughs> Star Fox. <laughs> no, I just, I just think, you know, I wanted a... A lot of the Star Fox games, like Star Fox Assault that I, and stuff like that, it's just, it's very, you're flying around in space and you're arming, but it's still very confined to, like, to certain battles and that sort True. of stuff, so, uh, to play at a much larger scale, which I'm assuming this is, with Star Fox mm -hmm. kind of vibes. I think Dylan Lust is right, when they list the pilots and toys for the game, it's just looking like Fox McCloud is there, not the crew. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so, maybe, that's what I'm saying, maybe, like, if, they would, the game, if they had it, they would show it, because yeah, yeah, that's what's going to yeah. sell this game. If the game isn't done in the water, they'll add it to the DLC later. October oh, 16th. Well, that's the thing. So is that take all those people? That's from just Assassin's Switch Creed. exclusive too. Uh, that's well, yeah, but I still. still oh yeah, it is. I wish they let that go. But you know what? Just give us fucking Starbucks adventures. Could be Star a game Adventures, that parents you know? buy for their kids for Christmas, but also could not be. So if they're not buying Skylanders or Disney Infinity, why uh, why are they investing in Starlink? There's no ships and uh, yeah, ship is it Feige? Who ship is it Feige? Fuck Starlink. Uh, For Honor had a showcase, said they were free for a week using Uplay, and then a mode called Marching Fire was it an expansion? Or and then game, game mode was Siege. Okay, so yeah, lots of cool stuff. And oh, yeah. the same thing Ubisoft. Breach, like, actually. I think Breach, it's, thank you. I think they're like the lamer Bethesda, where it's like if you they they <laughs> appeal to their. <laughs> I, mean, I would take that. I'd be the lame. They Bethesda. appeal to their fan base, and like we talked about Rainbow Six, this I'm sure the people that. Play for honor, like this is great and it looked great, but it's just stuff that for me, mm -hmm. it's not a new game, it's not a sequel, nothing I'm gonna jump into. When they said it was free for a week, no, nah, I'm not gonna jump in for it just a week. I always wanted to play because I like that idea, but um, good for the fans. They look like good, good stuff. This this game has a very unique fighting style and combat system. And when I first picked up the controller and tried it, it was very very tough, like to mm -hmm. get into it. But once I figured out, you know, my own system that works for me. It, it became really addicting cheat and codes. uh yeah, cheat codes. It was uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let my friends key. do the work. <laughs> that's the key. Yeah. Um but no it's, okay, it's good uh, at I, I very much, you know, appreciate Ubisoft creating this new IP like a few years ago and just bringing it to what mm -hmm. it is now with these new game modes and all these new uh, like um, I like the, seasons. I'm curious to see the future of the series. Mm -hmm. I think they'll definitely get a sequel in a couple of years. I think so too. I think new I, consoles for Honor Two. I think I I could see myself picking up a sequel to it. I think for like <laughs> for what the game is, the it was what sixty seventy dollar price point. Right. Yeah. I it, it Try not I couldn't years. justify that personally, but I do really like the concept of the just um, the fighting style. Have you whatever. played it? Um, no, but I sat down and watched it. Yeah, no, you watched it. Yeah, so yeah, no, yeah. I've, I've, uh, I, I, I understand what the gameplay's like, and I really like the concepts that it brings to the table. Um, I, there's also the fact that on PC, when it first released, there was a lot of issues, mm, as far classic. as the port goes, so, if they do release a For Honor 2, or if maybe the price point on this one drops to $30, $40, $40 I'd be... Is it still a full Skeptical price game? I Probably not. I will take it down. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but then there's also the I fact mean, that... Assassin's Creed Abby's... has already dropped in price, hasn't it? So yeah. I feel like For Honor would as well. Mm. There's also the fact that after you do play... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. always a uh, good... Big detriment. Isn't yeah, it? so... Yeah, as far as... I don't know. It's, it's cool that they're still um, supporting their game, but 
It's uh, it's not not for me right Retail now. Retail is thirty bucks. Nice. Oh, it's not bad though. Digital download. So you deluxe said thirty edition. bucks. I think you're buying this game tonight, Brady. For some reason, for honor, Del- deluxe edition digital download eighty nine ninety nine. Eighty nine. But think of all the deluxe things you I get guess with so. it. Yeah, it's like deluxe. the digital download. And then obviously this is finally fresh because when we talk about Assassin's Creed, uh, the crew two was before Assassin's Creed. Um, same thing. If you like those games, sure. But if there's other racing games out there. I would play before this and well this one's cool because you yeah. can fly you can boat around uh, and all sorts of crazy stuff so wow full drill story now um yeah I, th- I think it, I think it does look like fun but my budget for racing games is very low already Mario Kart I'll get but after that like I love dirt but that's even hard for me to buy a new dirt game I have one I'm like I if I want to play a racing game we'll go back and play dirt 3 on Xbox 360 <laughs> So it looks cool, and uh, you know, I, I I like one thing I like about uh, Ubisoft's presentations. They always have a variety of games, so I like Very that they true. have a racing mm-hmm. a racing game in there that is quite unique. I would say in terms of the current landscape of uh, racing games, so, they got a variety of shit games. You know, yeah. that's the thing. That's that's what sucks about it. <laughs> like They're they have good variety. Good. Unfortunately, the quality ain't so high. But yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Taylor. That's, that's about all I have to say on the that one. I mean, yeah, I think it's really cool that the flying is an aspect to it, but. As far as racing games go, the Forza one that Xbox presented GTA is my race. is much more um, is much more interesting for me. GTA is a great racing game. Um, yeah, this one, like <laughs> it, this one, the aesthetics <laughs> even like for as far as racing games go, I think like one of the coolest things is like with Forza, especially just how beautiful and how yeah. polished it looks. And this one, the Crew Two, didn't even come cl- didn't even come close to true. the same aesthetics of it. Yeah. So. And that's yeah, a huge thing because uh, as far as just driving goes, I mean, for some people that's great, but I like I want it to be a, a very beautiful game. I want to just experience all the scenery that I'm driving oh, through, not so. Uh, that that for me at least, I mean, I already don't buy racing games, but if I were to buy one, that's a big thing. So your, your zero dollar budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't have a budget. For if I ask you, it's thirty dollars. It's thirty dollars. I'm not buying it. <laughs> It's a cold-hearted lie. <laughs> Thirty or forty, even so, it's like you could have done forty. It's I like they I'd even low ball. You're I'd like, be ah! yeah, next I'd week, be my dear. Maybe next year when it's fifty. No, it's like, ah, that's even hot. It's my bargaining tactic. They'll come back to me you next year for like true. ten dollars, and I'll be like, yeah. Who's boat was Maybe. Um, Whose crew is it? Cut the check. I uh I thought you know the uh, presentation of Crew Two looked really awesome. I love the incorporation. Really of, you awesome. know, Yeah, that's even more than fantastic. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a different level. Very different. Uh, yeah, the definition of awesome has certainly been warped by the millennials, hasn't it? Yes. I think uh, the uh, land, <laughs> sea, air aspect of this, I think, is really cool. You know, the different variety of like land-based vehicles, dirt biking, cars, all that stuff. And then, you know, boats jumping over boats. The, the land vehicles and stuff like that. <laughs> Where's the trains? You know? the trains. Not enough train or games. Hopefully some DLC. I want a train, I want a train <laughs> combat game, you know? Oh, wow. God. It literally takes the train. Take place over high in the so You have to, like, man the crews who lay down the tracks adjacent to other players' tracks. You gotta go and then you build your train and then Not the customize it. And then you have to time your train to go down those tracks at the same time the other player's train is. <laughs> and then, yeah, I don't know how they fight. He's in the freight car! <laughs> You know, anyway. There are train simulators out there. Uh, that's a different. We saw it very well. I think I have one. I think I have Train Tycoon 4. Hmm. The hardcore edition. Um, hardcore. But yeah, I think it's uh, <laughs> definitely something I'll. Uh, conductor hat. <laughs> doo, doo. I don't know if uh, I'll be around to. Uh, <laughs> Where's the Are you dying? <laughs> I haven't told you guys yet. No, no I'll, I'll be getting the Xbox Games Pass, so you know, I'll be playing Forza before I play Crew 2. Oh, there you go. Shots fired. Where's the Ubisoft Game Pass? Tell me that. You play Ubisoft. Yeah. You play this terrible. <laughs> Ladies and Good gentlemen, job. the fans are breaking down the doors. Oh yeah, we gotta go. They're gonna. They need those autographs. They need that. Uh, that's not a PC joke. Maybe we should. Um, no, 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 no. With our conferences, we rate them out of five. Five being a perfect, great conference. Four being very good. Three being decent. Two being bad. One being awful. I'm gonna drop this. Good old 2.5. Just a pass, Ooh, not fail. I think that's a 
better because I think the past few years I've given them both under two and I failed them. I do think this was a bit shorter and a bit better, but it still has some problems. There wasn't any big surprises for me. There wasn't any games that were announced that I was really excited about. And then the pacing was all right, but at times it was very slow and I didn't need Biker Guy. I didn't need three trailers for the same game. So yeah, getting a little better. But uh, 2.5, just 50% right on the pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the exact same spot. I'm giving it 50% as well. Um, you know, compared to the other conferences, I have much better than EA's in terms of the presentation and the quality of the games. Mm. But comparing to, you know, Microsoft had a ton of games, a lot of quality games as well, so it doesn't compare to that. And then every single game Bethesda showed was amazing, so I can't really compare with that. But, you know, presentation... Game? Even the card game? Yeah. I mean, for a card game, they did a pretty good job. Yeah. I still, I, I still like seeing Elder Scrolls okay. content, so that stuff gets me excited from a, a biased perspective, at mm -hmm. least. Okay. But um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, con I, they're getting better every year, at least in terms of the, the presentation and the conference perspective. So that's good to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really only buy like one of these games, and that wouldn't even be at launch. It'd probably be a couple of years down the line. So. I don't know, no, no real excitement factor here. No sleep? You said that would be some sleep. I, yeah. I was or gonna, Ghost Recon. I was going to out, uh, or out of that. that. Yeah, well, that was what I was talking about surprises. That's... Because that was like on the Walmart leak, wasn't it? Was that from the... I will take a look and see the Walmart carry leak. Because that might be the first game that didn't uh, fall suit. Yeah, it's probably not from that list then. Anyway. Yeah. Um, for me, I think it was like a... It was an all right as far as the show goes, as far as like the presentation and the pacing of it. It was okay, it wasn't, it wasn't awful, but I think where they really lacked was, they had interesting enough stuff for people who were already into their products, mm -hmm. but as far as yeah, appealing the to the general audience and getting new fans, they didn't really do anything that was very exciting, uh, anything that was super crazy new. The biggest thing was Beyond Good and Evil, and even then, it wasn't really anything that was groundbreaking or... Yeah. I mean, maybe the hit, hit record thing, but that's something that is nothing really exciting. It's nothing near on the corner, it. right? Yeah, so it's, it's nothing near, road. and I think um, what uh, what they really... like. I always throw out my score. I'm going to give it a 2 out mm -hmm. of yeah. 5. I think this one was fatal. That's fair. Because... That's fair. For me, when I'm watching the E3 things, I think the, the biggest thing about this is to get people interested in your brand and interested in buying your stuff. Uh, for example, I gave, um, for uh, Bethesda, that's a 5 out of 5 with Todd Howard's part of the least because he sold me on every everything that he pretty much showcased. I pretty much sold or I'm very interested in. Sony, two years ago, I was... I at the Worst time I was sold. I had them. since have not bought a PS4, but mm. yeah, you're a, if you're I, a buyer. I am. Yeah, I bring it down to PS4. forty bucks. But yeah, yeah, for 30, 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's really it's these conferences are one of those things where they really need to they need to sell you on their products, and I don't think best, you know? I don't think Ubisoft did a very good job of that at all. It there's nothing there that except for maybe trials, but even then it's like. I'll think about it. Yeah. Um, so I, for me, this is a two. I, I think it was a bit of a failure for me. Um, I don't know. For honor moment. <laughs> yeah, 30, 40 bucks. It's 30 bucks. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you gotta do some better convincing. <laughs> 10 or 20. Um, I'm gonna give this fucking conference. You fucking lied uh, so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give it a three point seven five. It's under Xbox for me, but I still I really enjoyed the conference. I was entertained. You gave I gave Xbox a four, right? Yeah. Everything you gave like point. And then you gave Bethesda four point seven five. Oh, you gave Bethesda four point seven five. Was it four point seven five? I think so. Because you wanted to be higher than Travis, but you were like, eh, it's not. Because yeah, you gave it a four point five. You wanted it to be higher right. than Xbox, I think. But yeah. Not yeah. Quite the five. You definitely yeah. gave it four point seven five. You did. I was yeah. fully so charged. Yeah, so I remember all. Because they really earned that extra point two five. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, four point seven five for that. Uh, but no, three point seven five for Ubisoft. Ubi. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. No, I I was very much entertained. I love what uh, is coming out from Ubisoft. I love the content. You know, obviously Assassin's Creed Division. Incredibly excited for that. There's lots of stuff with it. Uh, 
Rainbow Six Siege, I love seeing what they're doing with the community. I love seeing what they're pumping out with Mario and the Rabbits. I love seeing, again, you know, what they're doing with, um... Fuck! Starlink. Skull no. and Bones. Was, yeah, thank you, Skull and Bones. Oh, yeah, know, I was um, joking. He said you <laughs> love... I don't get that. You said you love seeing, but you even said that you don't think you'll be buying this day one. So no, that, but I love seeing what they're progressing towards, <laughs> though, with the game. But it's not something I'm going to get right away. Okay. It wasn't bad. You just love seeing about it, you know? I love seeing yeah. about it's it. It's good. So, if you uh, love seeing anything, you know, like... Maybe if you even if you know you're not going to buy it, it's still, like, if I'm entertained, then that's part of it, too, yeah. right? Good eye candy. Um, oh. So... Those water animations. Those water animations. Felt like I was there. Fully wet. Uh, there's there's just lots that Ubisoft is doing that's great, but you know, as terms in terms of uh, improving greatly from you know previous conferences and you know, looking Ooh, towards the future, sucker. Xbox definitely has a little bit ahead for, uh, from that. But so far, I mean, this is basically my of all the conferences that I've gotten, I've been I've just been getting amped up, and I have so much stuff I'm adding to my roster of games. And this E3 is turning out to be you know. From compared to last year, I'm loving what we got so far. I am not disappointed. I feel bad for Travis because he's been let not, down. Not Travis is your every I'm left, so right, and center. Here. He's been so upset. So many things. Not just my stuff. I feel like you get to see Spider Man in two hours, my dude. You just like, like, yeah, they'll announce it's canceled. Ay, ay, ay. Um, yeah, maybe the uh, Splinter Cell was on that Walmart leak, so maybe there's a chance <laughs> they're hiding it for PlayStation. Small chance I'll pull it over. Really? Yeah, you never Nintendo. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the two things I was going to show just because we do this with our E3 news, because uh, that's just what we do. Uh, Crash Bandicoot's getting some new levels this weekend, so shout out to Crash. And uh, yeah, and I want to bring this up because Taylor's a Friday 13th fan. Uh, they'll no longer be doing any new content for the game, any new new content, because really? if people don't know, for years there's been this weird legal dispute because one company owns the rights to Jason Voorhees, then one company owns the rights to Friday 13th. The game's getting drug, dragged in the middle of it, so they can still help with servers and fine tune the game, but they can't add any DLC and anything which sucks. They still had like a whole year of Jason and Maps planned out, so oh, that's, that's fucking. That sucks, and I'm somebody that still plays that game, and it's really for what I wanted. Uh, I like that, so yeah, that's. Well, they still have, uh, at least have flushed out a pretty decent amount of content. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. It just they still have like three more Jasons to yeah, go. Yeah, that's so it's like so yeah so. We'll see, but yeah, in two hours, roughly, you come back to watch long. Sony will be here, and God, I hope they give me something good. I need something. But I know it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show nonetheless. Death Stranding, maybe we'll get some actual gameplay. Even seeing Death Stranding gameplay, I'll be very excited. Um, Spider-Man, Ghost of Hiroshima, and uh, Last of Us Part Two, and maybe some other stuff there. But uh, yeah, that could, it could be a good showcase. So. Yeah. Until then, it will not be boring. Check back for that and catch the review of this on podcast descriptions everywhere. And if you don't have us there, then let us know and we'll try to work it out. (laughs) But I don't think anywhere we're not. So thank you very much for tuning in. See you in a bit. Thank you. Bye-bye. Later, nerds.